morning. It is Jackie Glass Mama Navy Vet Certified Doer and your laced up legislator. Look at us looking up. <laughs> It is getting more lovelier and lovelier out here in these parts. Probably should have brought my headphones for you like we did last time, which was a beautiful walk. I think it's going to be uh, a nice high today. Let's get right into it. Okay, so... <sighs> this week... Um, Actually, first off, I got caught up this morning reading the newspaper, and I don't know if y'all get the newspaper, but um, it was it was it was a lot to be a lot to be desired inside there this, today. So I'm gonna hope that we, you, me, that we come up here, that we read this newspaper so we can have some real good conversation. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. So here we go. Right. Um, this is the week of April 11, and if you've been going on these walks with us, then you know April 11th was a very significant day at the state level. Pause, right? Because I was told if I didn't say this, I was going to get in trouble. We're having a town hall, April 23rd at 3 o'clock at Gethsemane Church. I'm going to say that again at the end. It'll be a town hall and a debrief, and y'all know I believe in distinguishing the differences between the two. Number one, a town hall is where I listen. There shouldn't be a lot of talking on my behalf for a town hall. So we will be having a town hall, but we will also be having a debrief. Now a debrief is where I talk and then I let you all know, I download all the information that I have or that I know and share with you all. Looking up, right? Okay, so April 23rd, three o'clock, Gethsemane Church over there um, off of uh, Brambleton. So. Virginia Beach. Am I saying it right? Brampton. Brampton, sorry. Uh, um, special shout out to Miss Sharon Houston for um, one, inviting me to their church at one point and then allowing us to use it as a venue to share all the things that we've been having going on with you guys. So please don't forget that date. Put it on the calendar. Um, two, uh, if you've emailed the office, now what we learned is that we had a lot of email going to trash. And it doesn't give us a notification on the outlook that there are things in trash. So we are backed up on emails and we are working really, really hard to get ahead. You can always call the office at 757-472-1293. I'm going to say that again. You can always call if you have a request, a question. Stephanie is my chief of staff. She will answer that phone and get back to you on things. If you had an email that you're like, I haven't heard from you, delegate, what in the heck is going on? Please call the office, 757-472-139, I mean, excuse me, 1293, okay? So we are going to get caught up. We got stuff from February in there. So like, really, I ask that you exercise some patience with us as we're going, we're getting down on it, right? We got a whole lot to catch up on. Um, secondly, next month, um, May 21st, um, we are going to have the first, hopefully, annual Norfolk Can Fly. Um, I, as I walk by, I think you guys know when, when I'm sitting up here walking, I'm always looking up <laughs> at these aircraft and I live with an air traffic controller. Let me walk the neighborhood. I live with an air traffic controller. My um, husband is air traffic controller and I was on aircraft carriers when I was in the military. So like I have this fond of love for just looking up and I remember always asking my kids, hey, uh, where do you think that aircraft is going? Um, so on May 21st, um, convening some folks with tools, parts, and materials to do a Norfolk Can Fly event where we will be allowing folks, we will be taking for folks to Norfolk International uh, to do uh, flights. We will have folks of color, and all kinds like it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be for our littlest citizens we I don't know what's happening I'm definitely not connected to the Wi-Fi so I uh, don't know what's happening this morning um, but what we will do 
Um, is we're definitely going to have oper uh, opportunities for drone. This is for adults and children. So stand by. The sign up is going to come up. It's going to be May 21st. We got more partners coming in and we're going to bust y'all over to the airport and hopefully realize that there are so many careers in aviation yep, that you are going to like. I'm excited. I'm just excited and more details to come. So don't forget the town hall on the 23rd at 3 and um, and um, Norfolk can fly next month and call us if we've not filled in any gaps for us. Like I said, our, we are so backed up with our uh, email as we empty out the trash as they say. So do not hesitate to call the office and thank you uh, Vince for putting that number in there, 757 Four seven two one two nine three. Okay, all right. Let's get at it. If you've been following with us, like I said, this week is really important. April eleventh, right? We are officially thirty days after, thirty days post um, session ending, right? The regular session. So, as I told you guys before, the governor had until April eleventh, right, to close business or whatever that time is on April 11th, to do whatever he was going to do with all that le legislation that we approved back in, um, that we approved back in, in March, right? March 12th, we got out. April 11th was his deadline. And so to get you guys an understanding of what happens next, so what now? Well, late last night, my phone was off the hook because we were getting all these alerts of, from the clerk of the court. The clerk of the court is like, I think has the coolest job, to be quite honest, in the General Assembly. He or she is the one that uh, stands up in front of us and is calling off the legislation and helping with like the rules and stuff like that. It is he, um, our cloak of the court is Paul Nardo, who does a really good job. I love when he goes down a list of, like going down a list of, of legislation. It almost sounds like an auctioneer, according to House Rule 30. <laughs> so I just say, you know, it takes a lot of practice to keep that room in order because to me, I think the general assembly, at least in the house, it's like um, it's like a, a bunch of middle schoolers, right? And the speaker is like the, the, the teacher trying to keep everybody quiet and on task. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of chattering and things like that, you know. Anyway, so the clerk of the court, who is also the speaker, who is also the keeper of the roles. And I know that may sound a little weird. The keeper of the roles, meaning he or she is going to do all the certification, the publications, the notifications of all the legislation that comes and goes. And that's a real, like if you look in the Virginia code, it's a real job, like the keeper of the roles. And I was like, that sounds like Lord of the Rings or, or something like that. <laughs> but that's, that's his job. And so he's sending us notification, letting us know what's happening with the legislation. And then we'll be the one to help make sure that it's published and that you guys have access to it. So Sini Dai, right, going backwards again, Sini Dai was April, uh, excuse me, was March 12th. Sini Dai means the last day of the regular session, and that's S-I-N-E-D-I-E, -E, Sini Dai, right? Um, so the, the governor has three, four things, four, excuse me, four things that he can do with legislation, four, right? So he had until yesterday to do four things. He could sign it, he could veto it, he could amend it, amend it, or he could do absolutely nothing. And there were, ooh, I think over 800 pieces of legislation. I'm not, a, I can't remember that number. I should have got that number for you. But how many pieces of legislation he has in 30 days to go through? Now, in the original, I was like, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. But, you know, he got a whole staff. And as we're approving things... There is that opportunity for him and his staff to sort of start looking at legislation that he does or does not want to, um, that he wants to take action on or not take action on it. So you probably want to, okay, so what happens, right? Like after he takes his action, so what, now what, like what happens? So in those four actions, so the governor, if he, uh, so here's what we know, right? That he has already taken action or uh, what do you call it? has uh, charterized, that's what they call it, uh, charterized uh, 100 and, excuse me, 701 pieces of legislation. So he's already signed 701 pieces of legislation, right? That's done, signed into law. That's a lot of daggum laws. You know what I wonder sometimes, do we be making too many laws? Because who knows, <laughs> who knows where, uh, you know, what's, 
what's what like who keeps up who's you never know a law could have changed and so recognizing that those 700 and piece, 701 pieces of legislation go into effect on july 1st okay so keep that in mind he vetoed 25 he vetoed 25 bills right veto is when he's like nope don't want it not having it veto is done right he's done that and then he's amended 114 uh, bills an amendment is meaning he made a change to it right he's like ah uh, yeah i want this it could be a technical change which means like put a comma here a period here an or or an and but to be quite honest what i learned in these committees like when i said the life of that bill even putting or in a bill can change the whole could change the whole spirit of what you was trying to do with a bill so like technical amendments mean it doesn't change the spirit of the bill we just editing it for the sake of whatever and so what happens is is on april 27th i gotta go back to richmond that's called reconvene so that's the two weeks or however many days the last wednesday or something like that in in april where we go back and we start looking at those pieces of legislation which means we've got how many did i put down here we've got 135 pieces of legislation to look at we have to look at the amendments and the vetoes and in order for um i guess the process by which okay so if if the governor vetoed a bill right the governor vetoed a bill what happens is two-thirds of that each house has to agree that they don't want to veto that bill for that bill to come to a law. So the House of Delegates have to have two-thirds of their members, but also two-thirds of the body have to be present, right? Like you've got to have, it's not just having a majority present, it's got to, you got to have two-thirds of the body has to be present in their seats, butts in seats, and then two-thirds of that body, which, you know, if all hundred of us show up, two-thirds of us have to say we, we don't want that veto. Now, once we say that, it goes over to the Senate, and the Senate has to do the same thing by two thirds. And if we both, if both houses agree that that veto ain't script, then that veto ain't script, and then that bill becomes a law. Does that make sense? Right. Um, so that's how we—that's called overriding a veto. Then there's amendments, right? So with amendments, I'm making sure I get this right. So uh, it's the same thing. Same thing, if, if we, we can accept the amendments that the governor makes or by a two thirds vote, both houses have to say, nah, we don't want that amendment. And it goes into law as in, in its original form, okay? Um, so if the governor does nothing to a bill, that means it just becomes a law. But understanding that every single piece of legislation that comes out of the house and the, the Senate have to go to the governor for action, have to. If he don't do nothing, it becomes a law. And he, does, he can do any of those other things. So that makes sense? So that's where we are as far as legislation. Nothing is enacted until uh, July 1st, unless, unless, unless there's what they call an emergency clause on a, um, on a piece of legislation, right? Like, there is, if there's an emergency clause, then... That means like it's happening right away. So even with like the mask mandate stuff, they put an emergency clause on it and boom, like it happened. As long as the governor was like, yeah, okay, it happened. So we gotta keep up with those sorts of things. Just making sure any questions, comments, concerns, like on what's gonna happen with these bills, um, what the next steps are, you know, Let's see. Good, cause we gonna be smart. <laughs> if anything, we gonna be smart and we gonna know what the heck is going on. All right, um, transitioning. Uh, this week uh, is spring break for a lot of you guys, and I I don't get well. Not you guys, for the little citizens, right? Spring break's happening. Hopefully, you are enjoying your time or whatever that looks like. If you got little citizens, I'm still trying to figure out somewhere to send my littlest one. As a uh, Lord knows. She said, she called me Delegate Glass the other day and I almost lost it. Not in a bad way. I just said, what's wrong with this child? She, she, I'm too deep into my work. She's hearing my name in that way too much. So it's time for a change. She needs a change of scenery. All right. But pulling ourselves down to local, right? What's happening locally? I, um, um, like I said, it's spring break right now and I got caught up. You know, it was late for the live getting caught up in a, an article that was in the Virginian pilot today which 
ironically was written by somebody from the Virginia Mercury, which let me just say the Virginia Mercury has been on it with really digging um, and finding information that's going on um, um, across the Commonwealth and to uh, journalism can make or break sometimes us. It sort of sets our paradigm about what is or is not happening. And um, that their journalism is exactly why I um, was able to put in the bill about falsified police falsifying documents, right? So now they just put in another, they just did another amazingly great article that I think is worth the read. I'm not finished reading it, but I was dug in it when I looked up and it was 6.30. Uh, but so on tracking, right, on the authorization to track people's cell phones and what that looks like. We had some legislation back in 2005 that sort of um, talked around what that could look like and how you could you needed a warrant in order to track because I think the Supreme Court has already deemed it unconstitutional to track someone without a warrant. Um, but in Virginia, I think the bar is set a little bit lower, lower based off the article that um, all you need is like a court affidavit or something. It's just, I'm going to read into it a little bit more, but what it set me off to bring to here to you all today is um, public safety is probably one of the highest priorities that I have. And I think we talked about this last week, but safety means something different for everyone. Um, I do believe we need to pay our police more, but I do believe that we need to hold them accountable also. Same thing for educators. I do believe we need to pay our educators more, but I do think there's a level of accountability on what's happening in that classroom. Like that doesn't, those two things are not mutually exclusive. And unfortunately, sometimes that accountability feels like, um, feels like conflict. And, and, and it's not. And so as I sort of get deeper into what public safety is and what it looks like to bring about, uh, you know, non-policing forms of public, of public safety while enhancing and, and, and improving our policing forms, I'm definitely going to need y'all y'all help. Um, these policy work groups that will start in the summer, if you haven't already signed up for one, I need you to do it. Um, I need you to absolutely do it. And it doesn't have to be just around public. You don't have to say, yeah, yeah, I'm really into to public. That doesn't, that doesn't have to be your thing. We can submit all kinds of legislation, but the goal of these policy work groups, when, we, when it gets down to like the nitty gritty of what we're absolutely trying to do is we're trying to get all of us more collect, connected and tied to our truths so that we can see our community legislated in a way that works for us. Because I'll say this and I, and I believe it, our entire lives are legislated. If you got in your car, you put on a seatbelt, that's some legislation. You stopped at a stoplight, that's some legislation. If you believe that your 40 hour work week is just, that is legislation. Our entire lives are, right? Look, I told my mama, they wrote law say that you can't whoop no kids like you want to. I get used to it. you know what I'm saying like that is legislation like uh, our entire lives are and so if that is the case if we understand that we are all in this system then I think we owe it to ourselves to make sure oh my god there's so much litter uh, uh, there I'm, I'm sorry I'm gonna have to come back down this street and pick up this trash um but um we owe it to ourselves to to find our thing and show up in that way. I had a guy ask me about motorcycle stuff the other day. And I was like, I didn't even know, you know, that that was there was an issue with, you know, something. He was talking about his license plate and talking about I was like, look, it, it's all legislation. So like I need you to go ahead and sign up for a policy work group. Go ahead, get on transportation. I don't know if that's the right group, but get on transportation and bring some of those motorcycle safety laws or the, oh, what it was, it was about riding between lanes. I can't, there's a word for it about um, actually allowing motorcyclists to ride in between lanes. So that, that's a huge piece of it. I, I don't care if it's birds. You hear them, them talking to us this morning, these birds? Oh, yeah, it's birds. Yes, then let's get on the, 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 the natural resources and whatever, whatever it is, right? Um, but I know that I can't, but this airplane has. That's united, y'all. 
But what I know is that if, if we are to do this and do it well, it is going to require for us to get closer to the capital, which is each one of you. We have to educate, we have to advocate, we have to celebrate, and then we legislate. Without doing those first three well, without doing those first three phenomenally or the best that we can, the, the last one we, we, we suck at. So, hold on. Um, so that's what I'm asking you. I'm excited about the work we're gonna do. Um, do not forget that April 23rd, we are having our uh, town hall. I want you to come. I want a town hall and debrief. Remember, town hall, I listen to you. Debrief, you listen to me. We're doing both. So I'm going to debrief all the stuff that we've been going through, take some of your questions, and then talk about the way forward with these policy work groups because we'll be rolling into the summer, right? We'll be rolling into the summer. And what we do know is we're able to start putting in legislation on July 18th. So that means some of y'all, even if we don't carry the legislation, we're going to walk through that whole process of putting that legislation in, letting the lawyers work it, so so you can see how this whole whole thing works. So I ask of you all to join me on this journey um, because many hands make like work. And um, be well. It's a beautiful day. Please get yourself some vitamin D and water yourself because you are a flower. I don't know what kind of flower you are. I might be an orchid today. They're pretty resilient. <laughs> uh, is there an invitation? Yep, there will be. So um, it will be going out to our mailing list. We just solidified all the things. Um, Char, we solidified the location. I think we're going out to look today um, and the time and there will be a post about uh, the town hall as well as uh, a flyer going out to our email listing. If you haven't signed up for our email list, please go ahead and do that. Go to the website or like I said, you can always call the office and tell, tell Stephanie to sign, sign me up. I want to get the notices. Sign me up <laughs> um, and then we can move on from there sound good we did a lot today let me let me go ahead and wipe that sweat off us let's look into the sun Woo! we did a lot today so as you know we're gonna be i'm april 27th and we'll be back in richmond we talked about the process of what's going to happen in richmond we got 135 different nine i think 139 different pieces of legislations to be walking through I'm excited to do it. I will definitely, definitely, definitely be making sure that you are abreast of what that looks like, what it is, because I think you got some interesting bills that will veto that listing will um, hopefully be posted today. It should be posted now that you notified us last night. All right. All right. Until next time, um, this is Jackie Glass, Mama, Navy Vet, Certified Doer, uh, your laced up legislator for the 89th District of the House of Delegates, and I'm wishing you a great day. Take care. See y'all on Thursday.